Welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you. And Matt Stoller is on the line with us. He's, uh, whoop, hang on just a second here. Matt, I've got to got to get over to my, uh, <laughs> to put you on the air. There we go. Matt Stoller is on the line with us. He is the uh, fellow with the Open Markets Institute, former senior policy advisor and budget analyst to the Senate Budget Committee. OpenMarketInstitute.org is the website. You can tweet him at Matthew Stoller, S-T-O-L-L-E-R, or at Open Markets. Matt, welcome to the program. Thanks, big fan. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for joining us. I'm a big fan of you and your work too. And and I watched this uh, video. I in, I I found it. Uh, it was embedded in an article over at NakedCapitalism.com, uh, where you were giving an address to the uh, to the Harvard Law School, uh, or I, I'm not sure if it was a graduating class or whatever it was, but um, and you were talking about monopolies. And and I thought it was absolutely brilliant. And I wanted to get you on to talk about it, particularly mo monopolies in the in the digital era. Um, for purposes of this conversation, can we? You used a a, 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 a quote from Brandeis, uh, the Supreme Court Justice, about monopoly. Can we start there? Sure. Uh, so you're talking about the definition of monopoly. Yes. Is that the one? Yeah. So Brandeis, uh, there's no actual uh, agreed upon definition of monopoly, but uh, Brand. I like the one that Brandeis used, which he he gave in testifying to Congress around 1911 or 12. He said uh, a monopoly is the uh, unified control of a recognized branch of trade or service. Okay, so if we use that as the definition, the unified control, um, that doesn't require one individual company, does it? I mean, you, you could argue that the four major airlines in the United States have unified control of the majority of air traffic in the United States. Is that a monopoly? That's right. It's uh, it's unified control, which can be done in lots of different ways. It can be done through the uh, uh, whether those those airlines are formed a, a cartel, whether there's common ownership of those airlines, um, or whether just one airline is so much more powerful than the others. I, I'm not saying this is true in the airline industry, but you know something like Google, they may not have 100 percent of the search market, but they have 88 percent of the search market. Um, Amazon doesn't have 100 percent of the book market. But they have enough such that they actually control the industry. Uh, it's, well, they have seventy-four percent of it, don't they? Yeah, something like that. But you know, Walmart, uh, for example, in the in the mid two thousands, I think they had about eight percent of of American retail. But they were still the pace setters. They still had substantial amounts of control over uh, the retail industry. So maybe they weren't a monopoly, but they were they were uh, enormously powerful. So yeah, the definition of monopoly is about at least the one that that we think about is about control. Control. Uh, yeah, the industry, I, I, control I would. Of communities. I would say that you know you're, the, the definition is the ability to make a market rather than simply participate in it, the ability to bend a market to your will. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean it's it's control um, is really what it is, and it's in it in in, in all all monopolies essentially. I mean large ones, the ones that we're concerned about. You know they they involve usually control of multiple different uh, sectors of a society. So it isn't just that you control say. Uh, uh, the retail sales, which is the way people might normally look at a Walmart or an Amazon. It's also that you control the labor market in, say, certain towns where you used to might, maybe you had 10 different stores, the baker, the butcher, the candlestick maker. Now they're all under one roof, um, Walmart, and Walmart now controls the wage level of that town. So there's lots of different ways that monopolies manifest their control, and it's not always just through one market. It's often through multiple different markets. That are so connected. so uh, correct me if I'm wrong in my recollection on this, but I believe that it was the Richard Nixon administration that began the process of breaking up AT&T and the, and the Jimmy Carter administration that finished it, and that that was really the last consequential antitrust action we've had in the United States uh, particularly since around 81 or 82, Reagan functionally stopped enforcing the Sherman Act, and we haven't had a president since then who has done so. Am I uh, engaging in hyperbole here, or, or and, and or is that an accurate uh, timeline? I would say that broadly it's an accurate narrative. I, a, a couple of the details. Uh, the the AT&T was, I think, the, I'm not sure if the suit was started under Nixon or Carter. It was finished by Reagan. So Reagan broke up AT&T ah. for a variety of reasons, mostly having to do with the fact that it was government regulated. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it was a sort of, it was a very weird situation. But the last major uh, antitrust suit was actually the Microsoft trial in the late 90s. And that had a really big impact on Silicon Valley. It, it oxygenated the environment for new companies like Google and Facebook. Um, even though the government won, but then it was overturned, it still had a really um, enormous impact. But you're, you're absolutely right that the Reagan administration, 
basically ended most antitrust, uh, most merger enforcement. What they did is they rewrote the merger guidelines. And then largely the Clinton administration, with the exception of Microsoft, accepted those changes and enlarged them in the defense space and, uh, and took it global. So that, your, right. your narrative is right. Right. And, and nobody has, has slowed that down. If anything, that, that train has sped up uh, through, the, through the Bush, the Obama, and now the Trump administrations. So uh, it, it, we, we just have a couple minutes left here. I wanna, there's so much material, uh, Matt, and I, I refer people, uh, check out that, this YouTube of this speech that Matt gave at Harvard. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, here we have Google with 88% of the search market, Facebook with 77% of the mobile social networking market. Two-thirds of Americans say they get their news from social media, and Facebook controlling 77% of that. Amazon, 74% of the e-books, uh, half of all online sales growth last year. Um, they have control over their branches of trade and service. I, it seems to me that by Brandeis' definition, each one of these three companies, um, not to mention the three of them in aggregate, are a monopoly. What do we do? About, if A, do you agree with that? And B, if so, what do we do about it? So, uh, yes, they are monopolies, and they're not just monopolies over goods and services. They are monopolies over the lifeblood of democracy, and that is information. So over the advertising and financing of media, uh, culture, entertainment, news, as well as control over books, which are the lifeblood of, of ideas. So these are not just monopolies. They are critical monopolies, and it's a threat to our democracy that they actually are these gatekeepers. What to do about them? Well, you have to recognize, first of all, that these are political institutions, and that as political institutions, they need to be fit into our constitutional order. Uh, in terms of specifics, the first thing you do is you stop allowing them to get bigger by buying other companies. No more mergers. Uh, Amazon shouldn't have been allowed to buy Whole Foods. Facebook shouldn't have been allowed to buy a whole bunch of companies that bought Google shouldn't have been allowed to buy DoubleClick. No more mergers. That's the very first uh, step. And once you do that, you can start to investigate, uh, but you'll start to see more competition come into it. And there's a whole bunch of other things you can do, and we need to do them all. We need a full-spectrum approach. Um, but, it, I don't, but the key is to recognize conceptually that these are political institutions, and they need to be addressed on a political level. That Google, Facebook, and Amazon have become major political players in our country. How, how different is the European Union dealing with this issue of monopoly in the tech sector from the way that the United States does? So uh, it's, it, there's a sort of interesting uh, set of allies on both sides of the Atlantic and kind of opponents on both sides of the Atlantic. So there's a lot of people uh, who, who still believe in this kind of old Reaganite uh, frame of, of that's kind of pro-concentration, but you're, you're seeing uh, a lot of people who are now, I mean, I'm one of them, I think, uh, but there are a bunch of people in, in Europe who are starting to say, hey, these institutions are a threat to our society. And the nice thing is that in Europe, what you're seeing is the, the Margaret Vestager, who's the, basically the head antitrust person for the EU, is really taking Google on. Um, and then you also have a bunch of privacy regulators in Europe who are really taking on Facebook and Google and trying to undermine their ability to control the revenue that publishers and newspapers are getting. So it's, it's very exciting to watch what they're doing. Um, and we're a little bit behind in this country, although you do see uh, some movement like a challenge to the AT&T Time Warner merger, which, which is, is kind of interesting in and of itself. It's a weird moment, but it's actually a very positive moment in terms of an intellectual revolution to address these problems. Yeah, it may well be. Matt, can you stick around for a little bit? Sure. I would, I would love to dig a little deeper into this. We're, we're going to hit a, a couple of breaks here uh, over the next few minutes, but in fact, we're hitting one right now. Uh, we'll be right back. Matt Stoller is with us. He is the fe a fellow with the Open Market Institute, senior policy advisor and budget analyst of the Senate Budget Committee, and uh, formerly, and uh, openmarketinstitute.org. You can tweet him at Matthew Stoller, S-T-O-L-L-E-R, and at Open Markets. And uh, we'll be sure to put up on our Facebook page, and I'll, I'll get it over on our Twitter link as well.